And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to a new episode of Sibling Rivalry. We're doing something a little different for you guys today. Um, an event recently came out in gaming that, that uh, tripped mine and Chris's ire to a, to a new level of what the fuckdom. And uh, given the nature of what it was, we decided that we'd organize a group together for a bit of a, a round table. So, of course, there's myself, there's Chris. Hi. <laughs> uh, we've also got our Yo. friends, uh, Sion, and... Uh, uh, who's with uh, Sanctuary Crew, which is a uh, streaming group. And then we've also got another Hello. friend of ours, Watchmaker. Who is just some random British um... guy. <laughs> 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 yes. Um, so as far as what's going on here, guys, uh, as the title will likely have indicated for you, uh, free-to-play game Ace Combat Infinity Launch. Now, the four of us have been fans of the series to some extent or another for some time now. Uh, myself, since back from their second game on the PlayStation, um, which is actually when Chris got into it as well. Uh, Sion and Watch, I'm not too sure when you guys got into it. I got my... into it uh, my, I got into it with uh, uh, Ace Combat 4, actually. Uh, I tried the original on PS1, um, and at the time, I guess I wasn't so into it. Um, during my freshman year at college, I tried AC4 and uh, immediately fell in love with the series and went back and replayed uh, what I could of the earlier games and pretty much stuck with it through then, even up through the abysmal showing that uh, was Assault Horizon. I came to the series much later, and uh, my first game was Ace Combat 6. Having said that, I've found... I found the recent games in the series to be a mixed bag, not all bad. But to say that this late, to say that this latest installment was unexpected, well, yeah. um, all right. So yeah, we've got we've got some some old dogs and some newer dogs. <laughs> some. Old, old dogs. <laughs> you like that? Uh, is that a jab at my age? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so, for those who haven't been keeping up on it, the latest iteration of Ace Combat that uh, Namco Bandai or Bandai Namco or Bamco or Bandai or whatever the fuck you want to call them put out, uh, they decided to go with the free to play route, which they've been doing with a couple of their other IPs. They did it with uh, Tekken and Ridge Racer as well. and in those cases, they also did not do yeah. very well at, at and and actually oh, um, a week or two before Ace Combat, they also released Soul uh, Soul Caliber, but Soul Caliber was different from the other one, which I can get into uh, later, so it's not to take up too much time now. All right, um, the gist of what, of, what, of what we ran into with this was when this game was first coming out, we were all cautiously optimistic um, for those who haven't been keeping up with it the previous game that they released Assault Horizon was a radical departure from what made the series what it was and while it got some okay reviews it really didn't hold up to what to what the, the originals were in that regard for it and what we were seeing with, with Infinity was it was looking to be a return to the classic gameplay mechanics for it but with the free-to-play angle for it, we were all kind of worried as to what was happening. Um, now it turns out we've created one train wreck for another. Yeah. Uh, and well, we and train wreck in some maybe regards. it was... It was the, the cautious optimism on the one hand, or maybe it was um, mistranslation or something with what they were saying, but it also seemed like the model they were going to go with this uh, was looking a lot better than what we got. Well, yeah, they. The thing is that that they were really mum on the on the whole pricing structure for a good ways of it. The one thing that they had confirmed at launch for this, which incidentally, guys, the way we're intending to go to handle through this is we'll uh, we'll go over what has been wrong with this first, so that we can so that there's hopefully some context to why we there's as much outrage mm -hmm. behind this as as there is, um, and then. Furthermore, for a bit of compare and contrast, we'll also give you guys some examples of free-to-play mechanics that have done substantially better in this regard, including games that are almost are, are close to being direct competition right. to what Ace Combat is. Um, 
So, I mean, the big thing that we, we initially hit for this was that uh, when when this was first being announced, uh, Namco Bandai initially uh, had it had indicated that they were still going to retain a single-player campaign mode, which was a hallmark of the series, since that's basically all it was for, for many, many years until the Xbox 360 and PS3 generation. Um, so this, this single-player campaign was, was to still be Im implemented, uh, which was being indicated that it was going to be completely free. Uh, we will also provide the links to a Kotaku article substantiating this in, in the description of the video. Uh, what we also ran into, however, was that there was mentioning of that the online was going to be a little different in, in pay structure, though they, they weren't really saying much for it. We didn't get any indication of it uh, until until the beta actually came out. Uh, whereupon the beta, we learned that what Namco Bandai was looking to do was, as opposed to as opposed to letting you effectively play the game as much as you want and find other ways to 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 monetize the the gameplay for it. Uh, they actually gated the core gameplay of it, very much like what you would have like with a Facebook game where you have a limited energy pool to go through and do anything, and then you have to turn around and, and sink more money to if you want to continue playing right away, otherwise you're waiting for a long period of time for it. Uh, to, to get this bit all, all on the table for it, what we're looking at is they, they were using a fuel system for this, where the game would supply you up to three of what was called supplied fuel, and then... Uh, Later on, you, you could purchase what was called stock fuel. Now, we since learned that there are some ways to gain the challenges to build up stock fuel, right. but we'll get into that afterwards because it's still kind of a mm -hmm. certain level and, of And And I will there point too. out that um, this is exactly in line with the pay schemes they had done with Ridge Racer and Tekken, um, but, and even um, a Gundam game that had come out in Japan that we didn't get, of course. Um, but they had been, the, the motions they had been saying during beta and during the articles that had come out discussing his combat was, oh, we, we hear everybody complaining about those systems and it was going, and we're, we're going to look at it to be different. Just be patient with us. And it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. They, they actually, uh, on their actual Facebook community, they had actually, uh, it was it was almost a hurt tone the way it was written because people were 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 still raising concerns and asking what are you doing for the pricing structure what are you doing it better not be the fuel system and so on and so forth and there was actually a, a, an official response on their Facebook page saying we don't worry guys we're we're, we're not we're not going to do this we're not going to do this why won't you trust us sure enough the game fires up and we discovered some rather disconcerting things. So first of all, to finish explaining right. the, the fuel mechanic here for us. Um, as far as the stock fuel goes, it is roughly $1 for one unit of stock fuel. One unit of stock fuel purchases you approximately seven <laughs> minutes of gameplay. Not counting all the time it takes to sit. In... Not counting all the time it takes to sit in matchmaking. Now... This is egregious enough. This is already pretty bad. What made things even worse was that the campaign mode, that the single-player campaign that we were we were basically being told was going to be free, was intended as a as like a tutorial thing to, to keep to get players accustomed to how to play the game, was now no longer free to play. Now, the the way they wound up setting this up is. They, they ran it where you had two missions that you could play for free at the expense of, of consuming one unit of fuel every time you wanted to sortie on these missions. The missions, for comparison's sake as well for this, were paying out roughly 200 credits of, of in-game money. Uh, the cheapest planes to buy, incidentally, were around about 7,000 credits, and then were ranging anywhere from 10 to 100,000 upgrade or higher. Uh, just so you guys can get an idea of how the payouts work for this. Um, and furthermore, to, to play the other three missions that are currently included, yet, so for a total of five campaign missions, it was continuing to go up at a rate of from starting from 200,000 credits and it, it extending all the way to 400,000 credits to unlock the final mission. And you still had to expend fuel 
in order to play these missions. Of course, if you didn't want to do this, well, you can pay 20 bucks to get the unlimited campaign play. So 20 bucks to play. Uh, I think it's missions. six missions oh. in total, and when the five missions. Oh, that's right. Five missions. Five missions in total, and when oh. the and when the sixth mission becomes available for everyone else, you get it for free. The campaign voucher goes up to states that it will go up mm. to mission eight, is what it is, its effect is good for. So if Namco Bandai decides to release mission nine, they can then turn around and start charging people again yeah. to play it. This in a series where missions you would normally have upwards of twenty missions in the single player campaigns. And I'd like to point out that this is effectively taking the season pass model and or yeah. butchering it. Yeah. Um, now, I mean, like, people have, have... I've had a couple people say to me, well, it's still technically free to play. You don't actually have to pay them anything for it. To which I'm quick to point out, I shouldn't be taking a month of... a month plus of regular gameplay to get access to one new mission that I was told was to be free originally. This is this is reneging on, uh, on a deal to such a level that no consumer... And, like... In any other circumstance, if you were to tell anybody that you were going to give them something for free and then turned around at the cash register and said, so by the way, it's another 20 bucks, they, they, they'd, tear you a new, they'd tear you a new asshole right. for that. And, I mean, it's it's one of the reasons why um, subscription-based ba subscription MMOs have been starting to get a lot of flack lately for the, so let me get this straight, I have to pay you $60 for a game, and then I have to pay you another $10 every single 10 or 15 dollars in some cases every single month to continue playing your game and people are getting wise to this yeah. and they're not enjoying it and to continue to be doing this kind of thing i mean look at the look i mean even for a paid game with a season pass where where something like that blew up look at what happened with battlefield 4 i mean i mean oh yeah well, Battle Battlefield Four took flack because they were saying they were they weren't going to release right, and then DLC they turned around and started it. releasing DLC while the game was still horribly broken. <laughs> but yeah. still, uh, again, you uh, have a game that is incomplete yes. at launch, and then you're immediately turning around and saying, "By the way, if you want all the other stuff we're going to give you for it, pay us money." Now, yeah, which is actually exactly what we're getting with Infinity as well, because they essentially have indicated that they haven't even finished the campaign mode and they're already yeah. fishing for 20 bucks for it um and i mean like like and this is on top of everything else they're doing for it because they along with everything else they, they went to a very grind task grind tastic method of unlocking aircraft which would have been fine in a traditional free-to-play game but in something like this where once again you're being nickel and dime like you're putting money into an arcade machine it's hard to justify a buck of play when you're talking anywhere up to a dozen missions before you unlock well, some of this Well, I mean, stuff. let me put it this way. I Before they went into, for whatever reason, they're doing a 40-hour maintenance. They've not indicated as to why. They've not released any patch notes or what, what they're fixing with this. But um, I was playing last night. I finally got enough experience to, do, to get... The F eighteen C, I think, is the first. Uh, F eighteen yes, uh, yes, F, yes, I think, is right. what you would. The F eighteen F, um, and this is after I think four days of playing, and using um, the stocked fuel that I've unlocked via um, doing challenges, and I think I'm I'm at sixty six percent now on unlocking the Morgan, which is another ridiculous requirement that they have with that, which I think puts me at somewhere around forty missions. And I still don't have enough money yeah. to get it because obviously I needed to buy upgrades to continue doing missions to actually be effective in the missions by getting other planes before that. So mm -hmm. already I'm looking at it. I'm like, if this was, I mean, hell, even even um, joint assault on the uh, on the PSP, the aircraft costs were mitigated by the fact that that you know missions were paying something out but even then they were not this obscene for for the first couple tiers of aircraft well more to the point joint assaults 
almost not even worth comparing because even if even if the expenses w were exactly. higher, it's not like and you're now, that's the on other play. thing. I'm not limited. I wasn't limited on play, so even if I was a little short, I could go back and grind a couple earlier missions, which yeah. we're not getting um, in this. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Uh, and I mean, they they make it all the worse for this because along with with the the stocked fuel, which of course there's also an extra well, bonus for multiple stocked, stocked fuel. fuels. <laughs> well, no, you still you get a bonus for just using stock fuel. Plus, you get an, another. Oh, okay. Bonus maybe maybe I was reading the multipliers wrong because it looked like it just said one times XP when it, when you're when you go through your mission rewards afterwards, and it actually indicates yes because oh, you okay used stock okay fuel, maybe you I missed that research. then yeah. Yeah, it doesn't give you a cash payout bonus like using multiple units of fuel will do, but it still gives you a boost on your research compared gotcha. to if you're using the supplied fuel. Um, and see, that's, the that's another that, problem, that not making it too, is that well communicated as to what exactly is going on. <laughs> yes. The other thing that we wind up hitting for this too is, um, along with all these other things, they, they, they enable you to, to purchase contracts. The two that they, that they kept, there was a third one that they had in beta, and I can't remember what it was, but it's it's been it's since been removed um but the other two that they remain that they retained was the uh aircraft uh con contract and then there was another one which is the mercenary contract so one one boosts up your overall researching and the other one boosts up your your cash flow and of course these can also be purchased at around about a dollar a piece of course for 12 hours. the thing with 12 hours is that's when you get all your play all your three supplied fuels back so unless you've been paying a dollar to get stocked fuel you then still have to pay to get the full benefit of having this 12-hour contract exactly incidentally uh since i i realized i forgot to explain the time frame for this the supply fuel that i mentioned that you get up to three of restock at a rate of one unit every four hours so you're given roughly 21 minutes of gameplay every 12 hours of, of real world time yeah isn't it? How generous. I know. Um, and I, I, I think for me personally, and once I, 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 I get this out, I'll, I'll shut the hell up so, so you guys can talk. Some That's okay. You're, you're the host. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think for me, some of the most galling aspects for this is, first, first and foremost, there's the realization that if this doesn't make enough money, I already know that, that Namco Bandai is going to turn around and say, well, you know, Ace Combat Infinity wasn't really doing all that good, so we're not going to make any more of these. Um, because we've yeah. seen that kind of stuff happen in the past. Yeah. Um, and then on top, on top of that, there is those people out there that will that are, are throwing money at them right off the bat. Like, if you look at the at uh, Acepedia, one of the, the uh, Ace, Com Ace Combat uh, wikis, they actually have a thing of like the maximizing your fuel strategy or maximizing your fuel strategy. And the number one thing they say is buy a campaign pass because if you finish campaign mission five, well, here's 20 fuel for you. Okay, well, that doesn't exactly help me get fuel for free in this free to play. I may game, as well have just paid $20 whatever, for 20 yeah, units of fuel, point. which, by the way, if I buy, if I buy the 20 exactly. units of fuel package, I get an additional, I think it's five or 10 things of fuel so you're not save yeah so you're not saving yourself any money yeah. really when you look at that um <laughs> yeah especially since campaign missions at least as far as we've seen only pay out 200 credits anyway campaign campaign grants grants the player nothing save for a couple extra yeah. emblems that's it um and then i mean on, on top of all on top of all this I, I I can already hear it that there's going to be that assertion of well you're not a you're not a big enough fan. Uh, allow me to turn around and look at my shelf with all the PS2 the games and PSP games, and the and the 3DS yeah, game exactly. And I still have Assault Horizon on there despite yeah. how much I despise that game. <laughs> yeah, calling essentially calling someone out on on, on, on yeah. poor marketing makes you a bad fan. Um, the last thing, and this is this is the biggest tragedy of it all. This is this is the one that I it, it breaks my heart. The game is fun. 
The soundtrack is great. They did they did some wonderful remixes of some classic tunes. They did they got some decent voice talent on hand for it as far as for the mission stuff is concerned. They redid the old like a lot of the old major plot points and brought it into the real world setting because previous Ace Combat games were almost always set in their in their own fictitious world that kind of uh, strange real world. was it's strange real was it's called releases... Yes. Yeah. And then on the PSP releases and also on Assault Horizon, they went to actual real-world geography, and they followed suit in Infinity, but then they brought back the previous stories from the games that took place in their own world. Yeah, and, found, and had started to work at, at merging a lot of these aspects in. And on top of all this, you have stuff that, outside of a few hiccups, you have a very wonderfully balanced game. Like, as far as the basic gameplay goes, as far as the core gameplay goes for the multiplayer, it works great. I love the competitive co-op angle for it. I love the fact that you're not that while you're 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 in competition with with the opposing team, you're not able to directly attack them, and it is literally a matter of who can get the do the most damage and and get the most payout for it. Now, I mean, hopefully they'll add in other modes later on to, to continue to mix it up, but for what's there, yeah. it's good. Um, on top of that, like graphically for what you can do with a PlayStation 3, they did a very good job as the video stuff that's gonna be overlaid with this will show. Like there there is so much here yeah. to make a good game. And 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 in, in case like it, when you looked at the feedback for stuff, there were dozens of people on their Facebook page that were saying, Let me pay full retail for this. Let me pay full retail for this just and and and, and not limit me. There were other people that were saying, "Give us an option to pay out like forty bucks, so we don't have to yeah. deal with the fuel mechanic." Like, like basically every bit of feedback that they were being given was, "We will pay you full retail to not deal with your microtransaction right. bullshit." And, and this is a problem that has hit them with every one of their free-to-play games, with the exception of again maybe the Soul Calibur one because the Soul Calibur one is terrible. <laughs> Um, like with, with Tekken, people were like, oh my God, the game rebalances are great. They didn't like the skill system that was in place, but they were like, they liked the, the way that the characters were made a little bit more fluid. Um, they liked some of the character redesigns. They were saying the same thing. Didn't happen. The Gundam game, which I don't remember the name of, um, which came out in, in, on Japanese PSN, has the same fuel system. And was again reaching the same complaints. And I don't know if this is just an indicative of how different the Asian and Japanese market is from here. People were complaining, but they were still ponying up the cash to play to, to pay for fuel to play the game. Yeah. Which is what and this is the problem is that people are complaining, but they're not voting right. with their wallets. Yeah. You need to complain <laughs> and boycott. As as much as I hate as much as I hate to say it, it's one and again it's one of those things like it breaks my heart to, to say don't play this I because I want to do the exact opposite I want to grab everybody I know who would even remotely like it and say you need to play this you need to buy a copy of this right now let's go but I can't I can't on good conscience recommend it to anybody not when someone nickels and dimes you to such an extent that that paying out full retail pop for this game gives you less tough less gameplay than some of the some of the most like critically reviled yeah. titles in existence we went to the arcade the other day while we were at the movies and for 75 cents we got 12 minutes yeah so i mean game game in context was ddr but still if this is the model you're going for and when you look at how long some missions were for Ace Combat, especially 15 to 20 minute long epic missions, they're now just slashed. Because yeah. Of your mechanics. And and yeah. where I get uh, nervous is um, I recently over the weekend, uh, this being June 3rd at this point, um, Bamco had released a, a had done a, a an open alpha for a game they're planning on bringing out here because apparently Gundam won't sell here, and that's why they're not bringing out Gundam Extreme Versus. They're using the Extreme Versus engine to release a game on Steam called Rise of the Incarnates, which is a fun game and has an interesting uh, has an interesting setup for it, um, and some interesting character designs and everything. But then I looked at the fact that that's going to be free to play. 
oh no, they're doing the <laughs> same thing again. <laughs> it's not just that it's going to be free to play. Yeah, it's and that's where I get leery on it because, again, it's a game I would love to support. I love playing the Gundam versus games, as anyone who has seen uh, Sanctuary Crew can attest. Um, and unfortunately, you know, if I'm going to have to if I'm going to have to rely on a fuel system to play a game, you know, that's effectively a different version of a game I like to play that I would be happily pay for, but it is going to slash me to, to hell and back. I, I don't know if I'm going to be that interested. And it's, and it's unfortunate that I say that because I would love to tell people go out and play this. But I've seen I've seen the history of where yeah, exactly. this is going, and and I'm experiencing firsthand how they want to do this. And it's not it's not for not wanting to play it. It's it's a matter of you don't you're you're actively pushing me away. And the worst thing is that we've had numerous companies that have shown better ways yes. to do free to play in the past. <laughs> Realize. I, I, I get this feeling that Watchmaker probably has something that, that's on the tip I know. of the ready to launch into here because <laughs> he's been deathly no, silent like, this I'm entire waiting time. waiting for him to jump in on this. <laughs> oh no, I'm just being polite. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is why you're wrong. How? <laughs> First of all, you've got to understand. First of all, please understand this from a corporation's point of view. They're not in. They, they see series like the Ace Combat series, the Soul series, the Tekken series, the Ridge Racer series. As as game series that to the that in their eyes are not performing the, the way they hoped they would. True, Tekken, Ridge Racer, and the Soul series have been long mainstays in the arcades, but as a console game, they simply do not have the impact that sports titles once had and what the Call of Duty series now holds. They want... As a, as some as as you two have said in other in a, in other videos, they want all the money, and it's hard to and it's hard to argue that they can only that they have to settle for some of it. You can't make that business case, so they so they will look for any business model that will garner the maximum amount of revenue in the shortest period of time, and unfortunately, that business model is the coin-operated system. The, the problem with that argument is, though, is that, again, there, you, you, stri you have to strike a balance. If you make it so that you're constantly nickel and diming your customers, they will eventually turn away. Even if it makes you a, a load of money or oh. even some money in the short term, in the long term, it's not a viable solution. It's and not. It is not at all. But that's the point. They don't see the these series making money past the first few months of their release in any case. They don't see this. Uh, they don't see these series as being hot sellers in the long term. They want to make their money and get out. If you had your doubts about the Ace Combat series as a vi as a well respected and long living and long lived franchise. You've already played Assault Horizon, where they tr tried to take a, a, a game series that had four... Uh, was it seven? Yes, seven games. It's set in an, an increasingly elaborate and fantastical alternate, uh, alternate universe, and then try to put it in the modern day with no explanation. Cutting out every fantastical element possible in order to ground it in military realism. No, no fantastical elements at all, except for the magic bomb that is sometimes as strong as an IED, other times as strong as a nuke. Because plot. <laughs> That's... 
and called Trinity because using the word nuke is bad in Japan. Well, you've just answered your own question there. Yes. <laughs> well, yes, I was poking fun at yeah. it. Yeah. That's not a question. Simply put, he's... The thing, the thing for this is, is that... Yeah, 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 actually, go. Sorry, I'm going to let you I'll, I'll, I'll respond Thank afterwards. Thank you. The Ace Combat series was not was not seen as being successful. Any attempts to shake up the formula have thus far not proven to be any major success. And it's not as if this is a series that is desperately trying to crowd out amongst a, a field of imitators. The closest game we've had to a to a competitor has been Hawks, and Hawks as a series, collapsed. As far as I'm aware, has there been a third game announced? Mm, no, I don't I don't think so. Uh, I don't think there's been anything else done for Hawks, but Hawks 2 is such a shit yeah. game ever. I'm kind of <laughs> glad for that. But again, that has been, that is their only competition. Even on the PC, even on the personal computer, the closest, the closest you have to a combat flight simulator is armor. In in modern releases, anyways. No, no, you have the DCS simulation. The DCS simulation? Actually. Yes. Uh, oh, yes. Digital combat simulators, they, they've they got a ton. And if oh, I'm correct, we aren't, they, aren't they compatible with each other? So if you've got, like, the MiG-1, for example, you can play against someone who's got the F-16 one? The, the, the latest version for DCS is now being handled in such a way where you get the initial DCS game as a actually as a free download funny enough uh which gives you the su-25 mm -hmm. frog foot simulator and then if you want to add and then they have add-on packs uh some of which are older sims that they have that they've ported into the dcs thing which give you multiple aircraft for mm -hmm. about 40 50 bucks uh and then there's the other ones that are newer simulators with greater fidelity that are around about the same price that are a single aircraft but yes they can all come in and play with one another and once you've paid that, that money to add one of those aircraft to it, that is the end of it. You don't have to pay anything else. Interesting. And the single-player campaign? You've got a full single-player campaign, plus a campaign generator, plus multiplayer. Huh. All of which is 100% free to use from the get-go. Intriguing. It seems the Russians have won this race, then. <laughs> well, I mean, if I may, if we're going, are we are we now moving on to to models no. that work or okay? <laughs> Not yet. But you are correct, though. This model isn't sustainable. It's impo It's impossible to, to. It's impossible to see this. To see the coin-operated model succeeding past a couple. A couple of financial quarters, simply because eventually people will get annoyed and stop playing. Now, you'd mentioned, uh, however, you did mention earlier that you'd be willing to pay full price. Well, that's what they've done for the single player game. Pay twenty dollars, you get the single player component, and. It's so, yeah, something, something, something unfinished, unfinished and is not even uh, a is only like what? Let me do some math here. Normally, they're what thirty five missions in a, in most of the other Ace Combat games. Uh, you're ranging from Ace Combat Four was around about mm -hmm. seventeen missions, and then going into the later ones, Ace Combat Five was a gigantic monstrosity of a game. Which yes, was, <laughs> I love it for uh, that one was that was in the twenties, uh, close to thirty missions. Zero. Um, Ace Combat Zero, I forget its exact length for. Uh, the PSP titles, likewise, were around about 20-odd missions. So, at eight missions, you're not even half of what Ace yeah. Combat oh, yes. 4 was. Oh, yes, but you're only playing $20. Before accounting for mission left. Obviously, when they release subsequent mission packs, you'll have to pay $20 for them. All of that should, in theory, add up to a full game. Yeah, for $80, if we're, if we're going by... <laughs> a full... Oh, also, also, a full game that I was promised I was, be yeah. I was going to be getting. Because free. during during beta, you were... They even said, you don't need to use fuel... You don't need to use fuel to play a campaign mission. If you use fuel, you'll get the bonuses as if you had used it... As if you had stacked 
fuel the fuel and used it on a on a co-op mission but otherwise you weren't going to have to pay or do anything in game to play that single player mission they lied yeah which is the outrage which is why i'm taking them to task for it you should you should have been expecting this by now well Expecting it or not doesn't and, and, exempt no. them from it. Expecting it or not doesn't exempt them for it because uh, with Tekken, they were up front with how it was going to work. With Ridge Racer, they were up front with how it was going to work. Even with the Gundam game that came out in Japan, they were up front with how it was going to work. They didn't try to pull this smoke and mirrors, let's obfuscate the truth and not tell people all the facts. They didn't do yes, that. Yes, but how well does the Yeah. And and then and then when we kept demanding them for the facts, they're like, "Oh, don't worry, just trust us, just trust us, just trust us." And then they bring up the pineapple and twisted sides, yes, upper backside. Because the, because the model of simply telling you telling you up front didn't make the the tech, did not make the Tekken or Ridge Racer games any more beloved, did it? No, but you know now now there's the outcry of them, you know, of betrayal to quote someone else. <laughs> 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 yeah, outright lying is just not. That's not. That's even worse PR. That's in the yeah. negative yeah. And, direction. Yeah. And, and they quite clearly do not care. You're right. They don't. But Th- that's that is why again, we're having why this discussion. The the impetus <laughs> is on us as players and as consumers to first of all call them on it, and to second of all endeavor to not give them our money and to make sure that other people don't give them their money for it. Reinforcing this behavior is one of the oh, yes. things to do. I, compl- I agree with you there. But the part that the part that does seem questionable, especially considering their behavior in the past, and once and yes, we will now go into systems that do work. The most common the most commonly accepted model of free to play that is both that is both fairly successful and suddenly sustainable has been that of the cosmetic upgrades mm-hmm. pay as much that you that every player is put on the exact same foot that no no real money is used to buy anything that would affect your performance in the game but you but you pay through the nose for every emblem, insignia, decoration, skin, voiceover, or any other cosmetic feature available to tweak it and cust- to tweak and customize your character and your experience to your own particular tastes. To yeah. those who are to those unfamiliar yeah. with the model, I mean... new hat. Yes, and Valve has been making money hand over fist with that, and the people who design new hats for Valve have been right. making money hand over fist. This is also typically how MOBA games work too, because you can grind out every every character on the list to unlock it if you feel like it. But if you want to get the skins and voice packs and all that for the characters, you're going to have to pay for whatever right. special currency. Um, I mean, even so, I've been I've been playing Warframe a lot lately. Um, and one of the things I like about Warframe is there's two options that you have for getting any new character. Now, you can either grind out to get the character in-game, and it'll take you a couple days to, you know, build the character and, like, build the components of the character, and then, you know, then you can use it, and you might need to pay for an extra character slot if you're out of character slots, or, you know, you make the tough decision of who do I get rid of that I'm not using, or you pay cash out for the character. The character's still level one. You still got to level the character. You still have to mod the character, like, and you still have to grind for everything else to make that to make the that character or weapon better. But again, there's no limit to how much you can play. You can play the game as many times as you want. The only thing that you have to pay for if you want to really keep playing the game is if you run out of uh, revives. And revives are on a character by character basis that restock every day. So if you've got five characters and you somehow you use up all of your revives, which means your teammates didn't help get you back up when you fell down, 
then it's your own fault you're not playing at that point. But guess what? Those four revives on that character, hey, 5 p.m. rolled around, you got them all back. Well, more to the point, I mean, my, my favorite example for this uh, to date has been Hawken. Where Hawken, I can I can play that as much as I want. I can play it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I, I can play until my eyes bleed and fall out of my <laughs> sockets for all I care. And the game at no point yeah. will ever stop me from playing. Yeah. At no point do I have to give the money to, to purchase any upgrades yeah. that give me a statistical advantage. I can earn every single one of them through gameplay. At the same time, if I'm feeling particularly impatient, I can pay them real money for their uh, meteor credits and then use the meteor credits to yeah. grab whatever upgrades I want. Uh, and, and then likewise, those meteor credits are primarily geared yeah. for and, and the only upgrades. thing that, that you can't get through the standard gameplay in Warframe is cosmetic. If you want a scarf for your Warframe, you yeah. gotta pay for that. You want this fancy skin for your character gotta pay for it even if i run out of revives right like let's say i've got my excalibur warframe he runs out of his four revives i can still bring him in missions just if no one gets him back up on his feet i get punted from the mission that's it i can still start another mission with him and as long as people get me up before that 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 death timer counts down i can still proceed to help out Yeah, so you're 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 still yeah. really not actually limited from gameplay. It just means that your your usefulness in missions is more dependent exactly. on your teammates being helpful. You get you get mixed results with that, but that's any game. Both the yeah. systems that you've described um, are uh, some some of the elements you've described. They're actually non they're actually non optimal. For example, Hawken, while the while you can pay uh, meteor points to uh, upgrade to upgrade your unit, and in theory, this is this should be a tool for monetizing the game. It's m it's more of a challenge to try and get the credits for to get the credits for that upgrade to upgrade it normally. It's more of a challenge to unlock to unlock uh, additional. Uh, 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 what is it? Vertical tanks? I could never remember. Ah, uh, no, they were. Um... Oh, I forget. Yes. But anyways, yeah. new max. We'll just use max. Actually, I think I you're right. Just max for that one. Yes. Uh, anyways, it is. It would be. It's more of a challenge to unlock new max, both through character progression and through, uh, in and through in-game owned currency, than it is buy, to buy it. Uh, using the in-game store. This is actually a problem for the developers of such a game, and especially the publishers, trying to make a, try, trying to make money off of it, because people don't want to spend money. It's a challenge. It's not an opportunity. And while while I can see the point in that, and I'm sure, and I know people who play Warframe, who yes, that's how they see it. By the same time, by the same token, I can go into any match in Warframe, and I can tell right off who's spent money on the game because they have those cosmetic upgrades. Yes, the cosmet, as I said, the cosmetic upgrades is much more, is a more sustainable system because it does not affect gameplay, but it does affect player experience, and. <sighs> This actually has been suggested uh, by the uh, by the team behind Extra Credits. Yes. As the mo uh, as the most sustainable method. Well, one of two sustainable methods, but the second one doesn't really apply here. But cosme cosmetic upgrades they do not break the flow of the game, and they and you can you can never run out of cosmetic upgrades. See the unendless treadmill that is the, the that is the endless cycle of hats, badges, clothing, wigs, and other cosmetic upgrades for. What's well, it take for a modeler to throw something together or yes. a texture artist to do something? Well, and that's the that's the genius of TF2 as well with user created content and actually encouraging users to create that content because they'll get a slice of the pie. 
Well, yeah. Well, this is this is like when I was I was saying to another friend of mine too, like going to to the Ace Combat Infinity thing in general. If they had an option, like uh, presuming that that we we abolish the fuel system, if they had an option where for certain aircraft I could pay, let's say, we'll we'll say five bucks, five <laughs> bucks. I'll, I'll be generous. If I could pay five bucks to change the F sixteen C in Ace Combat Infinity to look like the F the Ace Combat three variant of the F sixteen with the coffin system in it, and with no other change in statistics, simply aesthetic changes. Here's my five dollars. Go nuts. Well, why stop there? Coffin upgrade for the in-game cockpit. A selection of player avatars for a visual radio system. It's not that far. It's not not yeah. that far out of the setting. They've already yeah. got quick content in the game anyway. And honestly, in in a game that really didn't need that kind of of system, Gundam Extreme versus uh, Full Boost. There's HUD. They for DLC they have like about oh god I think it's like eighty different HUDs. Um, like something like 60 different operators, which are Gundam characters that will occasionally do cut ins and, and talk about what's going on in the match. And let's be quite honest how many people would, lo yeah. would love to ha have their character, their in game character voiced by Ken Nagase? Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. I'm just hearing all the fans going nuts. Um, all right. Oh, please. Um, we know you want you, so you want your character voiced by Wolf. Uh, I'm going to put us on the four-minute warning to, to finish this off because we have been running for a good while, and I think we've said about uh, almost as much as there, we can really I think so. say in one sitting <laughs> for this. I'm not done. Um, but yeah, so so like other like for the for the sake of being constructive in our criticism, like what else could we do to improve a, a, a system like this aside? From well, if you're going if system. you're going to have a fuel <laughs> system, right? Don't require fuel just to sortie. If, but, you know, reward people for getting that fuel. Give them that bonus of, you know, of XP or something like that. Something that's not going to make them overall, like, amazingly better, but will, you know, help cut down on the time. Because other people will look for that. Like, you know, if you're a casual player, you don't want to grind, you know, the same mission 60 yeah. times. But... Well, yeah, and that, like, and there's that angle to it. It's the, if... I'm not unwilling to give them money for stuff it's just it's when it's when you when you want to, to to put a toll booth in front of me and say so it's free for the first 10 steps and then after that it's it's a dollar a step well i'm, I'm gonna flip you yeah. the bird to go play something fun <laughs> or for to make readjustments here i like i even had written if the if the like in their whole thing for player for the uh, player survey, I had written if the fuel system is staying, a fair price to me if they have to keep it would be ten fuel for five, not a buck fuel. Because at that point, it's fifty cents per fuel. Here's here's my angle for this. This this is this is my statement for for how this is. If you are going to have a grindtastic game like this using a fuel system, if I am unable to fully experience everything your game has to offer for the price of retail, you have done it wrong. If I am unable to have every plane unlocked and maxed out for, for based upon what's here right now, they added stuff later on, that's a different story, but for what is available right now, uh, like so for the top tier stuff, if, I'm, if I am unable to have the T-50 or the F-22 with all of their special weapons unlocked and with everything else prior to that fully unlocked, then you have charged me too much for my time. Well, I think you would get a lot done with 100 units. But you don't get 100 units of fuel. No, I'm talking about repricing. Oh. Because we're, yeah. we're saying, aside from fucking fuel systems, so repricing would be part of it. Yeah. I do. But, sorry, what I, what I meant that is is the things that we could do in... in would, like if we were to, like if if we were to remove fuel on its own, that obviously would help. But then we need to obviously propose yeah. ways to, to monetize besides that. But yeah, I do get well, where what, you're coming from. Well, what's surprising is that they already know how to monetize this shit. They charged out the ass before for planes, and yet they've apparently skipped over that idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Actually, there we are, because because uh, Assault Horizon they no, actually I... had their like a, a yeah. game that you paid full retail on, and they did yeah. it with Ace Combat Six too. 
seven bucks a plain yeah. DLC. <laughs> and how much was it for paint schemes? Like a, buck, a couple of like bucks, and the paint schemes actually changed yeah. the stats of the planes in some instances too. Yeah. So you could do non-stat changing color schemes. You could you you could do DLC planes if you wanted to go that route, or or just make all the planes available in the but. By a, by a gameplay and then keep your customization but monetize as Watch has suggested. Or hell, even adopt something something akin to the older system of Ace Combat where you had to you had to go and hunt down aces or, or in Ace Combat 5 special bunkers as well to get part drops for a plane to make it go and just make those part drops random drops if you want to make it a grind, a, a grind but still have people able to read them. So. Yeah. And that would effectively be adopting the yeah. Warframe system too, and I would I would be okay with that because I would be reflying missions at the chance of finding that ace or bunker random spawn with its drop for a yeah. part that I need. Yeah, exactly. And they have and they have the ace spawns in the game. Yeah. And all they do is they make your points higher for the end of the mission, as far as I can tell. They don't guarantee any kind of special drop. There's there's no there's no practical benefits for killing an ace over anything else. Not, not to mention there's no practical benefits to to putting in the effort for an S rank on story mode. Like, you could two hundred credits, ladies and gentlemen, two hundred credits. You could throw me five k at least. <laughs> yeah. Or how about a hundred k since you want two hundred for three. But that would interfere with the monetization scheme that they have chosen. And that, fundamentally, yes. is why this game is going to die. Mm-hmm. Yep. Ultimately, folks, it's going to be, if you really want to play the game and it is fun, just just use up your three supply a day and keep going and keep going until you're out of free fuel from challenges and then just use your supply a day after that. Or I'll, I'll give you guys a better suggestion. Here's, here's, here's the best suggestion I can possibly give you in the world got a PSP, there's options for this too. However, go pick up a PlayStation 2, buy it used on eBay, buy yourself the copies of Ace Combats 4, 5, and Ace Combat 0, and for the money that you have spent to do all of that, you will have spent less than what it would cost to unlock most of the stuff in Ace Combat Infinity, and you will have more gameplay. But I'm strictly speaking, not giving the money. <laughs> Yes, but I'm, I'm talking about supporting yeah. the series where it was actually be Yeah, but you can't exactly support the series if you have to buy used copies of the game. So you're not supporting it. Sure you are. You have to buy you have to buy new copies well, for those sales. At the very least, if you, pretty sure. Here's, 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 what, here's what I want everyone to do. Here, here, here. If you have, what I want you to do. If, if you buy, if you wind up wait, buying wait, wait, a wait, wait, wait. If you have a PSP or a PS Vita, there's two games for PSP that are available as digital downloads okay. There is joint that you can buy yes. that will work on your PS Vita. They're both... For the money you're spending on those, you've already gotten more gameplay. And hey, one of them has a co-op campaign. <laughs> yep. So there we are. What I want everybody to do who's listening to this, who has the inkling to play Ace Combat Infinity, don't give them any money for Ace Combat Infinity. Go and grab yep. Ace Combat Joint Assault. And make sure you find a friend to play it with. In fact, find three other friends to play it with. Because, because it is hella it, fun. It, it, it unfortunately requires you to buy a PlayStation Vita. Ha ha ha! Screw you! <laughs> Never. <laughs> Alright, folks. So, on that note, uh, this having run a hell of a lot longer than I was originally intending, but whatever. <laughs> um, so, this is Jeff. Chris, very tired we'll see you on <laughs> and watchmaker and we'll see well chris and i will see you guys back again for another episode oh come on the other two. Uh, well yeah, one of these days done. one That's of these it. days new challenger has appeared and, and i will be there i will make it happen and <laughs> i will be watching you yeah whenever we can get we can manage the recording all right folks we'll catch you again another time <laughs>